fixed indexed annuities. If you've ever listened to a Saturday morning financial advisor radio show, you've probably heard about fixed indexed annuities. Make money when the market's up. Uh, don't lose anything when the market's down. Uh, that's the topic of the day. We're going to talk all about it. Stick around. Hi, I'm Antonio Sabella with Vision Wealth Management. Thanks for watching the video today. Fixed indexed annuities. Uh, there's a lot to cover here. The starting point as far as fixed indexed annuity basics is it starts its life as a fixed annuity. What do we know about fixed annuities? They have a term. You put the money in for a certain number of years. Uh, with indexed annuities, oftentimes it's seven. You can find five year, six year, seven year, eight years. Generally speaking, let's call it a seven year for the purposes of our example today. That means the money goes into the account. It's got to live there for that period of time. If you close the account, pull the money out, you're going to pay penalties if you close it out during that term. So it's got a term. It's got a principal guarantee. Uh, fixed indexed annuities, again, a variation of a fixed annuity. It's got a principal guarantee and fluctuate. Uh, it, can, it can grow. It will not have downside risk. The big difference between a fixed and a fixed indexed is how it earns interest. In the straight fixed variety, you're just earning a specific interest rate, typically for the term. Uh, sometimes it resets annually. With an indexed annuity, you've got multiple interest crediting options. So it's important to note the money's not going into the stock market, but they may have options that will pay interest based on the return of the stock market subject to the terms of the contract. So I'll give you three examples of how it earns interest here in just a second. Uh, remember, it's got a term. It's got to go in and live there for a certain period of time. It's got a principal guarantee, meaning it doesn't fluctuate. You don't have the downside risk that you would have in a typical investment account that might be invested in stocks or mutual funds or what have you. Uh, how does it earn interest? Oftentimes you've got multiple choices. You've got some sort of a fixed rate where it's just gonna earn a little bit of interest no matter what, and they'll publish what that rate is. And typically in an indexed annuity, they can change that rate each year. If you select putting money into that option, you're just gonna earn that interest. Uh, there's no uh, additional upside. The other ways that it can earn interest, and each contract is different, but as a generalization, you have point-to-point uh, -point caps and you have participation rates. Now, a cap is exactly what it sounds like, point-to-point. -point. Money goes in and starts here uh, over the course of the year. doesn't matter what the index does. They're going to look at it again 365 days later. Now, let's say they're tracking the S&P 500, and for purposes of our example, uh, it's got a 4.5% cap. Money goes into the account, S&P's here goes up, down, or sideways, 365 days later, it's here. This represents, in this case, a 12% return. You're not getting 12%. Your cap, your ceiling, is 4.5% in this example. So if it's up 12, you get 4.5. If it's up 6, you get 4.5. If it's up 3, you get 3. So you get whatever the index is up to that cap or ceiling. Uh, and then that becomes the reset point for the next year. So here's year one. This is the starting point for year number two, and we go on from there. So that's a cap. Generally speaking, you're going to receive the upside up to a certain portion if the market is down in that example. So let's say it started here, and one year later, it dropped 10 or 12 or 15 or 20%. Uh, you won't have downside risk in an indexed annuity. You won't earn any interest for that year for any money that's in that option, but you're not going to lose anything uh, because of downside risk to the market. And then that can set you up for future years because this becomes your starting point for year number two as things hopefully would uh, come back in the future. So uh, that's a cap. Let's talk participation rate. That's the other option. A participation rate says you get a certain percentage. So it's going to work the same way. You've got your point uh, A and your point B, but instead of saying your cap is four and a half, they might say you get 50% of whatever the return is. So whatever index they're following for the participation rate, that's important. You want to find out uh, what they're grading this thing against, what they're measuring it against to pay your interest. Uh, but when you look at that, see what index they're following uh, and say, okay, well, if it's up in that same example, 12%, if I get half of it, I get a 6% return. Uh, so that can be more beneficial, a participation rate, if things are going really well and you have a larger double digit return. To have a year where an index might do 18 or 20 or 22%, you could make. 10% in a circumstance like that with a 50% participation rate, whereas with a cap, you're going to be capped out at, in the case of our example, 4.5%. Same thing, no downside with the participation rate. Uh, if the index is down over that period of time, 
you're going to earn no interest, but you're not going to lose any of your principal. Uh, that's the basics. There's a lot more to it than that, uh, but think with fixed indexed annuity. It's going to limit your upside, but it's also going to eliminate your downside risk. Uh, it can be beneficial for the right person in the right circumstance when you're trying to take a little bit of risk off the table. Maybe you would take a portion of your money and move it there. You certainly don't want to move everything into something like that because, again, there's restrictions on how much you can access and when the money's tied up for that term other than maybe some little ways you can get pieces out along the way. Uh, that's the, the uh, deal today. That's what we're talking about. Hope you learned something. Uh, hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you soon.